بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو آفس ڈاٹ کام ڈاٹ پی کے ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از یور ویری اون پلیٹ فارم ویئر یو کم اینڈ لرن اینڈ وی آلسو ٹرائی ٹو پرووائڈ یو ود ہینڈی شارٹ نوٹس سو دیٹ یو کین لرن دا ٹاپکس آن یور فنگر ٹپس اینڈ آئی ہوپ اینڈ بلیو دیٹ وی آر سکسیزفل ان آور ایفرٹس Dear students, as you all know that in the last lectures we have been discussing about growth and development in living organisms and in the past lectures we have discussed the growth and development in plants and in animals. We also covered a very important topic of chick development in the previous lectures and also we have discussed various mechanisms of development through which we were able to understand the role of cytoplasm the nucleus and the role of gray crescent in the whole process of development dear students today we are going to discuss the concept of differentiation as well as embryonic induction dear students differentiation was defined in the previous lectures as well that it is basically the characterization of cells into different groups depending upon their functions for example the cells that are going to perform the process of excretion will become kidneys similarly the cells that are going to carry out the metabolism are becoming liver and the cells that are going to conduct the impulses throughout the body will become the neurons or nerve tissues so ultimately the fate of the cells is decided and they become the part of the organs according to the functions they are going to perform today we will continue this concept and we will see some experimental verifications of this concept dear students as we all know that developmental stages they begin from the formation of fertilized egg means when an egg is fertilized by a sperm the zygote which results is the starting point where from where the growth and development starts i told you that there are some components present in the cytoplasm that are known as kappa particles the kappa particles have some morphogenetic determinants and an important point that is to be noted here is that the cytoplasmic components are unequally distributed throughout the cell these kappa particles have some morphogenetic determinants means the factors or the components that are going to decide the morphology of the living organism are present with these cytoplasmic components and mostly these morphogenetic determinants include messenger rna and amino acids i have explained it earlier that amino acids are gathered according to the instructions from the dna to form a specific protein so these morphogenetic determinants that include messenger rna and amino acids they control the function of specific cells and they are also responsible for directing the group of cells or making them for their specific function which is actually the differentiation and the category of cell is determined depending upon their function in the future organism so we all know that a zygote contains all the complete information which is necessary for the development and you cannot study the process of differentiation easily as it is as it is a very complicated process and it is very difficult to understand how the cells are differentiated and how it is regulated 
that what cells are going to become the part of which organ so various factors alone or together control the differentiation and this is also known as the embryonic induction mean certain layers they control the growth of the other layers and they stimulate the other layers to form different organs now let us see the experimental evidence of what we have studied earlier we have seen that mostly the experiment on embryonic development are performed by speeman so here he also performed another experiment to experimentally verify the process of differentiation and to see how one part affects the other part or how one part is important in controlling the proper differentiation so these experiments the experiments to verify the process of differentiation they are performed on embryo of frog so he took uh, he basically performed two series of experiments in the first series he took a frog's embryo and after that he removed the piece of ectoderm from that embryo the piece of ectoderm was removed from that embryo the piece was grown separately whereas the embryo without that piece was grown separately now two kinds of results were observed first the piece that was the piece of ectoderm that was separated earlier that was active and healthy but it did not show any kind of proper growth and structure means it was growing but it could not be tell uh, it could not be told that what organ it is going to form whereas the embryo that was grown separately it formed a defective nervous system which showed that presence of ectoderm was crucial for the development of nervous system on the other hand he took another frog's embryo and removed the mesoderm and he was surprised to see 